In this video, we'll be covering the three angle dimension components in Rhino tab. These are angle dimension arc, angle dimension points, and angle dimension lines. I have color coded the different components so that it is easier for you to follow the script. Each of the components has its unique way of creating the dimension, but they also share quite a lot. All of the parameters are pass-throughs, which means that all of these components can be used to edit existing angle dimensions or create new. Let's first look at the shared parameters. First is the text override. This is used when you want to either override a text in a dimension or if you want to append something to the text. We will look at this when we get to the examples. The last five parameters are text settings, dimension settings, arrow settings, units settings and tolerance settings. All of these will change how the text will display, what precision will be used, etc. These are some of the bulkiest components there are. They will be covered in separate videos. The arc version has two unique parameters, the arc and offset. This is a really simple way to create a dimension if you have an arc. You just have to make sure that you know the positive direction which the offset is going to move the dimension line to. The points version takes a center point and two other points to calculate the angle and then a fourth point to place the dimension line. The line version simply takes two lines, calculates the angle between them and places the dimension in the dimension location point. First things first, let's look at the text override. There are often times when you want to use the dimension lines for annotating by adding some text to the line. This can be done by plugging text to the text override parameter. It is also useful to display a text and the dimension value. You can do this by using this less than greater than parenthesis. Here are three different ways to create the angle dimensions. In all of these scripts, we are using the same query model objects pipeline to get the Rhino elements inside the Grasshopper. The arc is really reliable, but you have to have an arc-like curve to apply this dimension to. Here I have taken the circle and used curve closest point and shatter to get an arc-like section from the circle. Then I simply just plug the arc to the component and can adjust the offset. Now the points one looks even more simple. I'm just getting some points that I have placed in Rhino using a list item to sort them to their correct inputs. Now if I want to change the dimension location I have to go to Rhino and move the points that control the distance. And if I want to change the angle, I will simply move the point on the curve. For the last one, I am getting points from Rhino and creating two lines from the points. In this case, the operation is very similar to the points one, but looks more complicated. Each of these have their use cases, but I prefer the points one. If you are using points in these components or any components in Grasshopper, make sure that you have a reliable system for sorting the points to avoid situations like this, where in reopening Rhino, we have lost the order of the points and our dimensions have gone astray.